These are called arithmetic regressions. Anyone want to take a stab at why GPs are called GPs? What's geometric about a geometric regression? They're like the Earth. They're like the Earth? Geographical. Okay, yeah. The shapes are defined by them geometrically, like kind of alternating between two different sets. All of these are valid. They're all valid. I will give you what, as far as I know, is the historical reason. Okay. Um, clearly, of all the APs and GPs that are out there, some are more special than others, right? So, for instance, some really, really important um, APs and GPs would be, you know, if you have a look at this, right? Okay. So, what's happening here, right? If all GPs have this kind of behavior, right? How would you describe what's happening as you go from um, term to term? Okay. Well, in a real way, like, okay, I know we're saying this is generally like n minus 1, but particular powers, because they come up so often, they have particular names, right? No one reads this as ar to the power of 2, and no one reads this as ar to the power of 3, unless you're in geekier than I am, right? In fact, you say ar squared and ar cubed. Now, that's how we stop. The reason why we stop and we don't have a special name, really, for 2 power 4, is because we live in, count them, three dimensions, right? So if I were to represent each of these spatially, this would be like a point. This guy would be like a line. The next one is ar squared. Right? This guy would be like a square. And once you get to the next one. Does it mean like a to the power 4 would be like tied? Uh, it would be a, it'd be a <laughs> hypercube, or also known by its much cooler Avengers related name, a tesseract. Now, Fifth dimension. Yeah, that's exactly right. Now, this, this relationship here, right? The, the fact that this is growing in a clearly geometric way, right? These are shapes that we're talking about. That's basically the reason why these are called GPs. Um, and it doesn't, it's not that bad an idea, actually, to think of it as something, a little line, and then a square, and then a cube, because that's really, like, algebraically, that's what's happening, okay? So, that's that little side note, okay? I hope the picture stays with you. Let's have a look at this question. Now, this question is not much of a question at the moment. Because, yeah, it's, a, it's a statement. Oh, it's a sequence, right? Now, in fact, the reason why I've left it so vague is because we're going to do two things with it. Three terms are enough to define a progression, right? Three terms are enough. But when you don't know what the three terms are, the sequence could be anything, right? It could be, and I've got rid of it because I need the space. This could be an AP, or it could be a GP. Or it could be both, <laughs> depending on what the value of x is. Okay. So in fact, we're going to do both of them. We're going to make this thing into an AP. A certain value of x will make that true. And then we're going to make a GP with a different value of x. Sorry, you have a broken arm. Go to the wall. Oh, cool. All right. I get it. So you can, um, pizza. 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 Sorry, you have a broken arm. Please go away. <laughs> okay. Now, because your brain is in GP mode at the moment, at this second, let's do the GP first, even though in order, you should AP with cool. So, how would we make this sequence here? How would we make it a GP? And the fact is, we know exactly what makes a GP a GP. It's a common ratio. How do you test for a common ratio? Oh. Perfect. Now, this is the way that we would check whether a sequence is a GP or not. Right? Now, I am telling you, or rather we're defining, we're saying, yeah, I'm making it a GP. We're saying it's a GP. Therefore, this is true, as opposed to when you're testing, you don't know whether this is true or not. You don't know whether there's a equality, which is why you do one and then you do the other. Completely different, right? So we know it's a GP, we're locking it in. So now, therefore, being that we know what term one, two, and three are, 
Let's just put them in and see what happens, okay? So I've got turn yeah, turn three on turn two. Turn two on turn one. I know this to be true if in fact it is a GP, okay? And from here, not that difficult. What am I going to get out of this? This amounts to solving what kind of equation? Quadratic. It's a quadratic, isn't it? I've got AX plus 16. Are you happy with that? Does that check out? Of course, I'm after value of, of X, right? So if I um, just neaten this up a little bit, uh, I'll bring everything on the left-hand side. I'm going to subtract 3X. That gives me 5 of them. I'm going to go um, take away 30, right, which means me with minus 14. Is that checking out? This is what he got through. Stop saying. You happy with that? Yeah. Factorize for me. X plus 7, X minus 2. Oh, thank you very much. Now, unsurprisingly, as we should have predicted the second we wrote down the quadratic, there are two solutions, right? There's X equals negative 7 or X equals 2. Okay, now let's just see what happens, right? Because now I have these values, I can pop them back in my original um, sequence, right? Let's give the first one a go. Three, so this is, um, this is GP1, I suppose, number one. The first GP is going to look like this. Three is always the first term. What's the second term? Minus three. It's minus three because it's minus seven plus four, right? And then when I do minus seven plus ten, that's three. positive three, right? Is this a GP? Yes. You bet it is. A is equal to three, and R is equal to minus negative one. one. And if the next one's going to be minus three, and then three, and then and so on. So this works. Let's check out GP number two, at least what we're hoping it is. The first term is still three. What's the second term? Six. Six. And then the third term. Does it check out? Yes. Sure does. Common ratio of two. Two. In fact, that's the GP I think I gave you for question one. Okay. Now, that's what happens if there's a GP. We start with this. It's not functioning as a test anymore because we're not testing. We're saying it's a GP. What am I going to start with for an AP? T2. T3 minus T2. T2 minus T2. So this is the condition for something that's an AP. So if I'm defining it as an AP, then I can just state that, right? So let's give this a go. X plus 10, what's your signs? You happy with that? Turn three, turn two, turn two, turn one, okay? Uh, it's what kind of equation, what kind of family does it belong to? This is a quadratic, this is linear, linear right? Linear, why is it that you only get one out of the, yeah, think about it for a second. Um, what am I going to get on this left hand side? Oh, yeah. X is cancelled. Yeah. I just get 14. No. Sorry, no, uh, six. sorry, 6 is a, there's a minus sign. On the right hand side, X plus 1. So X is equal to 5. 5. So let's test it out. What's this AP going to look like? First term, still 3. Second term, 9. Nine. Nine. Third term, 15. Does it check out? Yes. yes. It had better because that's where we started, right? <laughs> if it doesn't pass the test, we've done something wrong. Wait, so okay. when it's moving? Yeah, no money. All good? Yes. Okay. Um, why is it? Why is it that there's only one solution for the AP, but there's two solutions for the GP? Yeah. Because um, if there is more than one solution for the AP, X plus four, um, the next term will be X plus eight. Because the common difference is twice um, mm -hmm. as you move along. Yep, good, good. Um, this common difference thing, we can think of it in terms of these categories over here, right? You think about this. If I've got, if I've got a, um, let's think an AP world, right? I've got my first term defined. It has to be positive, right? So it's one of these. It has to be one of these. It can't, can't possibly be either of these, right? Here or here. But hold on a second. Hold on. Last I checked, whatever the value of x is, right? Whatever the value of x is, x plus 4 will always be, I should say it this way, x plus 10 will always be bigger than x plus 4. Do you agree with that? Yeah. So I can't possibly be going in this direction. I can't get to negative. I can only be going in one direction. <laughs> so therefore, there's only one possibility. But when you come down to a GP, you have a look, right? Again, my first term is positive, okay? So it's either this or this, right? Is there anything stopping me from alternating? And well, obviously the answer is no. Okay? Nothing like what I said before where this has to be headed in a certain, it has to be getting bigger. So it can only be this one. 